Hey everybody, how's life treating ya? I'm Russ Robo, and welcome to this channel's first Robot Arena 2 tournament. They come from around the globe, the greatest robot competitors this side of the planet has to offer. So first, without further ado, let's see who's first up on the roster. We've got Roly Poly from Team Prehistoric versus... Oh, 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 gotta look at my notes. The buzzer signals the start of the match. Hit the announcer. <laughs> well, not me. The announcer in the game. But we've got Scout from Team Red Zone versus Roly Poly from Team Prehistoric. First to the lightweight preliminaries. And it looks like. Scout from Team Red Zone is, he's, he took a great strike, but uh, he pushed Roly Poly over and it just left him there to die. No. Push him back over. Be a good sport. Come on. You can do it. Be a good sport. Be, be a good sport about it. Come on. <laughs> no. Bad show. Bad show. He's trying. He's trying to push him back up. Good thing I set this thing to three rounds. I'm gonna skip part of it if he doesn't push him back over. Oh, jeez, it's over that fast. Well, I guess I don't have to skip part of it. And Red Zone from Team uh, Scout from Team Red Zone moves on. Prehistoric Roly Poly is out. Let me just mark that down in my notes. Okay, so check mark by the winner, X mark by the loser, and then I'll make the digital roster to show who won and who lost and who all's up. Got it. So now, uh, next in our round of lightweight tournament champions, or competitors that is, preliminaries will be fighting in the Robot 2 Arena standard match. The middleweights will fight in the bridge arena, the heavyweights will fight, I believe in the electric arena, but I haven't decided for sure yet. Looks like we've got a couple of top rate, uh, top notch rate competitors here. Top rate competitors, top notch competitors. Couldn't and decide between two. Oh! And both Ninja and Catfish come out with a heavy blow. Catfish takes it right to the front of the chassis. He's getting heavy damage to the side. Ninja is using those spinners to its advantage. Oh! And the arena buzzsaws come up and hit both robots. Some tire damage has been taken by Catfish. Catfish looks to be taking heavy damage. It's not looking good for Catfish if he can't get out of that hold. Oh, and Ninja goes straight in for the kill. Ironically enough, Catfish still with the higher amount of points. Must be, must be from those heavy hits. Ninja's still dealing massive amounts of damage to that tire. It may, be, it may come off any moment now. It looks like the right side of Catfish may be buckling. Catfish is still taking heavy amounts of damage, and the kill saws come on and deal damage to Catfish from the underside now. Still with both of its tires, Catfish still with the higher amount of points. It looks like he's taking a heavy amount of damage to the armor of the chassis, as you can tell by the red bar on the bottom of the uh, of the bottom of the HP bar at the top left of the screen there. The bar in red is flashing, meaning he's taking a heavy amount of damage. It looks like that tire is about to go. That right tire of Catfish. Oh, and the arena spikes come up and almost get Catfish in the bottom again. Now Ninja going for the left tire. Trying to focus targets on that left tire. And the kill saw is coming. And deal a little bit of damage to the tires on Ninja. Ninja still dealing damage to the left tire of Catfish. No, that's the right tire. And the chassis of Catfish is buckling. It's buckling now. We've got Catfish smoking. He's being pushed by Ninja. Ninja having all of the battle control, completely controlling in the arena. Ninja is definitely controlling this match. And there goes, no, not the tire of Catfish, but the spinners. One of the spinners of Ninja has been dislodged. Now with one spinner down with his, oh, and now both spinners down. The main weapons of Catfish now disarmed and smoking, or the main, ni the main weapons of Ninja, both disarmed and smoking. We've got Ninja and Catfish smoking now. 
Ninja with no primary weapons. Catfish still has his spikes. Catfish still with the higher amount of points. However, Catfish also has much higher chassis damage. And now Catfish has succeeded in managing to dislodge one of the main rotors on Ninja. But with no, with no Ninja spinners, that weapon is basically useless to begin with. It's not looking good. It is definitely not looking good for Ninja right now. He may not be able to pull this out. Oh, and it looks like Ninja will be the Great winner match. in this match. That's it. Match winner, Nin uh, no, Catfish. What an upset. Oh, even though Ninja had more control, Catfish actually won the round. All right. Let's see now. And now for our next bout. Let me get that mark down. Got it. And let's see. Black Storm versus Team Sparks Jackpot. I also, I always, I always love the convenience of how they list each team one right after the other, and the match setup saves your previous settings, so that when you select a team, the next team you select will automatically go down to the next level. It doesn't start you up from the top every time. And I should say, I love the finish on Jackpot. I just, I love it. I can also do a tutorial video on it. Oh, that's for later. Oh, and Jackpot comes in with a heavy hit on Bot 204. Bot 204 looks like his chassis is taking heavy damage, but he's got that spinner up against Jackpot's underside now. Let's angle the camera so that we can get a better angle on what all the action is coming on. And the kill saws come on under the bottom of Jackpot. Jackpot takes a heavy amount of damage. However, that hammer is still damaging the front of Bot 204. Jackpot being very precise about targeting all of his shots towards one area. Oh, but that saw is dealing a heavy amount of damage to Jackpot's underside. Jackpot has lost a huge amount of chassis, uh, chassis durability. As you can see by the red bar up in the top right of the screen, uh, it's flashing the red Jackpot with uh, 256, Pot 204 with 1,438. It looks like Pot 204, even though the saw doesn't appear to do much damage because it is obviously blunt, uh, it still does the damage and it still registers. Uh, Pot 204 with a much higher point total. It may win this round if it can just manage to keep its CPU from being destroyed long enough to win the round. And Pot 204 still getting the damage on Jackpot's underside. Jackpot being pushed all around the arena right now into the kill souls into the into the arena spikes pushed to the edge of the uh, pushed to the edge of the arena into the wall and over onto its side but jackpot still getting good heavy hits it looks like jackpot may either be running out of electricity or running out of pneumatic power for its hammer weapon melee damage is a heavy hitter oh and the spikes come up and deal a massive amount of damage to jackpot's front and it looks like bot 204 either bot could be knocked out now their cpus are exposed it's anybody's match and jackpot pulls it off at the last second with a good heavy hit to the front of bot 204 let me just get that mark down real quick i'm making a physical roster basically i made like a tournament roster where it's the um where it's the, uh, you know, the grid for the competitors. And I just put, since I'm trying to get the match in there real fast to keep it going, keep things moving, I just put a check mark next to the winner and an Welcome X to next to the loser. Zone. And then later on, after the, the preliminaries are done, I'll finish the physical uh, tournament with the names the and then do a digital version so that the, um, the viewers can see who all won. It's going to take forever though. As we begin to <clears match. throat> In this match we've got, uh, let's see, who was it? Spikehead's M.A.D. or MAD versus North Polar's Mini Berg. Oh and MAD comes in with a heavy hit but misses the attempt. North Polar's is coming down with that spike straight onto the head of Mad. Mad's got those spikes out ready to go but it looks like he's got some poor driving by the CPU. North Polar's coming in from the left side and from the right side. Now coming in from the front. Getting those spikes and all the right strikes. Mad's not able to actually get a frontal attack in. 
not able to attack or tackle. He's just backing up continuously. MAD with 559 points, but heavy damage on the chassis. The crowd is going wild. They're loving this match. We've got Miniburg with over 1,500 points, still dealing heavy damage to the chassis on the front top end of MAD. It may be able to take one of the tires if it continues hits like those. It looks to be running out of pneumatic power. Oh, it is not running out of power for its pick. It's still got lots of heavy hits left. Mad's only hope is that, oh, Miniburg's pick would be destroyed, but it did not disengage. We've got Miniburg as the match winner with 2,093 points. Now moving on to the next match, Miniburg will move on to our semi-final round. get that marked down real quick all right with that marked down we're looking at high team high voltage team high voltages lightweight entry flapjack versus team hexes lightweight entry flame Into chopper the combat zone. The flame chopper with an excellent weapon that seats. I like a lot I actually made a bot designed off of that concept there with the top-down axe. I believe it deals a lot of sharp damage. It looks like it may have a disadvantage against Flapjack's flipper weapon, though, as it does not appear to have self-riding unless that axe doubles as a self-riding mechanism. But let's see how it winds out. Both bots coming in for the full frontal assault, and Flapjack getting the early flip on his opponent, leaving him on his back, pushing him towards the arena wall. It seems Flame Chop is able to use his chopping axe as a self-riding weapon in the right circumstances. Flapjack having some trouble getting Flame Chopper completely onto his back, the axe preventing him from putting him on top of his head, and Looks like Flame Chop is only, only going to be on his bottom for this match. We've got Flame Chopper getting in a couple of good hits against Flapjack. Flapjack definitely the controller in this match. And Flame Chop seems to be running on its hind legs right now. Flapjack definitely the controller in this match, pushing him towards the kill saws. Can he get the kill saws to engage? Oh, and. And Flame Chopper brings down the axe just in time to rewrite itself and come just out of the area of the kill saws. However, it appears he's left himself on his own head. And he's been flipped over by Flapjack. Flapjack now still controlling the match. Pushing Flame Chopper towards the arena walls. But now Flame Chopper getting good strikes in on Flapjack. Oh, but not paying attention to the kill saws. Flame Chopper coming down with a good heavy hit against Flapjack's main weapon. That may be his strategy. If he can get that main weapon disengaged or destroyed, he may be able to con he may be able to finish this match as Flapjack doesn't have any other options for Ooh, and a heavy hit from Flame Chopper. Thanks to Flapjack's flip, as a matter of fact. Flame Chopper in the wrong position. He needs to get straight forward. Get those heavy hits on the front top of Flapjack. Flapjack definitely still controlling the match, locking Flame Chopper's weapon. The lockup is definitely real in this match. Flapjack seems to be having trouble with his main weapon now. Flame Chopper is definitely... Come on, Johnson, get the camera angle. There we go. Oh, and it looks like Flapjack's main weapon has been exposed. It looks like if Flame Chop can get just a couple of more good hits on Flapjack's main weapon, he may be able to finish this match. Unfortunately, he's being pinned up against the arena wall. Could Flapjack be looking for the 10 count? Oh, and if he is looking for it, he better back up first because the ref is actually 10 counting on him, isn't it? It is. Oh, or was it? Flapjack may be looking for the 10 count, trying to end this by a technicality. And there's nothing wrong with that, seeing as how he's a flip bot. He won't be able to completely destroy his opponent. So he may be looking to leg him and leave him, as they say. Or flip him and leave him, the in this case. Is over. And it appears Flapjack's weapon, his main weapon, actually was too damaged to continue on in the last part of that match. So Flame Chopper takes it home with 1,200 points. Which would explain why Flapjack tried for the 10 count at the last second there. Because he knew that his weapon was 
probably heavily damaged from some of Flame cho uh, Flame Chopper's shots. Good shots. Good hit. By good hits by Flame Chopper. Next up, we've got. Let me check my notes real quick. Team Z's Berserker to the versus Steel Yard Dogs Everyone Lightweight, or uh, Team seats. Z's this Lightweight Entry Berserker versus Steel Yard Dogs Lightweight sharp. Entry Little Doll. You can feel the tension between the opposing robots. And Berserker with the deadly match. looking axes. Definitely love that design. Love the finish on both of these bots here. Gonna get a good night. A good, gonna get a good fight in this match, I believe. And we're off. Little Dog being the pusher, his main objective would be to push his opponent into the arena traps, either the kill, either the kill Sauls or the arena spikes. He definitely does not want to let Berserker get that spinner up to full spinning speed. The damage it deals with those sharp axes have been known to take out bots before. It looks as if Berserker has. Little Dog pinned up against the arena sidewall. However, Little Dog being the push bot should be able to push back against Berserker. Not really sure what might be wrong with Little Dog's engines. It may have a malfunction. Not sure if the team checked the engine before the start of the match. Berserker still trying to get in on those heavy hits. It appears to be able to hit the side pretty easily, but with the front being sloped, with the front of Little Dog being sloped, it doesn't appear that Berserker is going to be able to get the shots on Little Dog's front end very easily. And Little Bo Dog pushing Berserker towards the arena sidewalls. Definitely a heavy push there by Little Dog showing its power. Definitely showing a good amount of power, but unfortunately not being very aggressive in this match. And it is definitely going to need to get very aggressive as he, if he expects to actually be able to defeat Berserker. Berserker with 360 points now to only Little Dog's only 25, 36 now. It appears that the front part of Little Dog's chassis has been exposed enough to actually expose the tires themselves. If Berserker is actually able to get off a, good, a few good shots on the front of those tires, that may be it for Little Dog. This is definitely not in Little Dog's favor. This is not a good match for him. Trying to back up on Berserker, maybe possibly flip him over. Berserker having no self-riding mechanism. Little Dog's only chance at ending this match now might be a flip over for a count out. Its chassis is taking a heavy amount of damage as you can see by the flashing red indicator. Oh, and it almost gets the flip over. Could it flip Berserker over and end this match? Oh, so close, but no cigar. The kill saw is coming up and almost getting Little Dog and knocking him out. Ooh, don't want to get those kill saws on you. Not at this stage. Berserker with a heavy 1,286 points and Little Dog taking damage from the kill saws. Oh, and he's pushing Berserker around the arena. Possibly into the arena spikes or into the sidewall. And it appears Berserker got free of the hold and is now coming back against Little Dog. Little Dog pushing Berserker towards the arena sidewalls and backing up. It looks like Little Dog's scared now. Could there possibly be a problem with Berserker's main weapon? It appears to be slowing down, but does it matter? Little Dog the taking a heavy hit to its CPU. Little Dog now smoking, and Berserker ends the match with 1,417 points as the victor. Little Let me just get that marked down real quick. All right, and next we're looking at Team Riot's lightweight entry, Civil Disorder, versus Team Megaton's lightweight entry, Stinger. There we go. Welcome to the Combat Zone. Both bots having devastating weapons. Stinger the with that razor, with that, sharp. with that razor's the edge on the very front of his bot, and Megaton Stinger with a harpoon. I believe it is a hydraulic powered harpoon. Time to and it looks like gear. ooh, civil disobedience. Not very good on the startup there. Very slow on the startup. Seems to be having trouble with the engine. Stinger coming in with a lot of heavy hits very fast. 
to the tires of Civil Disorder. He may lose that front right tire. Of course, they're both front tires, but he may lose that right one if he keeps taking hits. He, doesn't, he definitely doesn't want to expose that side. Unfortunately, given Stinger's power, it doesn't look like Civil Disobedience wants to expose any side of himself. Stinger already in the first 30 seconds of the match having 1,580 points. A completely devastating performance by Stinger so far. Civil Disobedience in big trouble here. The crowd is loving this match. They're going wild. It looks like Megaton Stingers may actually end this within the first minute of the round. Oh, and the Arena Spikes coming up and almost taking Stinger out from the very beginning. Oh, and Civil Disobedience is out in the first minute and 30 seconds of the match. Not even sure if that was a full minute and 30 seconds. With a devastating 2,393 points to only a, uh, a respectable 590. But still, not good enough for Civil Disobedience. Unfortunately, he will be out of this year's running. Or this season's running, that is. Next we've got Team Scrapper's lightweight entry, Arc Pounder versus me! <laughs> My entry for this season from Russ Robo's robotic army, Mini Reaper. Welcome to the Combat Zone! We've got a great match coming your way this evening! I hope you like my robot design. The idea for it came from a graveyard. It is a deadly coffin with an axe still coming out to kill its opponents, even from the dead. Oh, oh shoot. I gotta look at the, uh, I gotta fix the camera angle. I can't go with this from a front forward facing angle. One moment. No, this camera angle's all wrong. I'm almost in the spikes. Gotta get the angle right. Oh, forget it. I gotta go in there. And we've got... Oh, oh and we've got Arc Pounder taking heavy damage from the arena spikes. And... Mini Reaper comes in there spinning its axe to deal great damage to Arc Pounder. Ah, oh, it's so hard to announce and play at the same time. And Mini Reaper deals a heavy amount of damage to Arc Pounder's left front wheel or left wheel uh mini reaper is almost in the arena spikes he needs to be careful if he doesn't want to end this match for himself he's definitely got to have better driving from the pirate pilot oh but the pilot's definitely going to need a better camera angle next round if he can make it through this round and mini reaper coming in with the heavy axe hits against arc pounder oh arc pounder coming in with the heavy hit against that tire yes and I, I mean Mini Reaper, got the win. Woo, with a devastating 1,767 points. Looks like a good round for Mini Reaper with the victory spin. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, make sure to subscribe for updates on future content. And uh, until next time, take it easy, my friends.